You are one of 12 factions vying to become the Serpent's Champion. A title awarded by an elusive dynasty that controls the vast wealth and knowledge of the Antares Kingdoms. And to do this, one to five players will flow through three decades to construct a kingdom of cards better than your rivals. I mean, it's a board game after all, it's not like a call to arms. And as a heads up, this is a paid for preview supported by the fine folk at Sand Time Games, so know that going in, as well as what I'm showing you is an advanced prototype. And here, it's my mission, so help me God, to give you an overview of how the game works and what you can look forward to when you play. The name of the game is True Mark Points. Well, the name of the game is Antares Kingdoms, but you know, what you're trying to do is earn True Mark Points. And you'll do this by pushing your way up the six scoring tracks on your Kingdom Tracker by achieving different combinations and sets of buildings and endeavours. At the end of each of the three decades, you'll tally these achievements and you'll want to move up these different tracks. Firstly, because you'll get big rewards in the form of coins and you'll unlock special abilities and perks, but also because that's how you get those true mark points at the end of the game. So how do we do all of those Antares Kingdoms type stuff? Let me take you through one of the three decades of the game, which is split up into 10 rounds. Each round has seven steps that flow very quickly. The first of which though is to progress all the buildings you have in your build queue one step. More on that in just a moment, but step two is actions, which is the core of each round. To begin with, everyone gets two actions and as many free actions as you want or can afford. And this is all done simultaneously. For one action, you can build, where you place an Endeavour card, of which you'll start the game with five at the start of the game. Another action is just to simply draw two Endeavour cards, but when building, the payment is most often time. It takes time to build things, so according to the time cost, you place the building in your build queue. These buildings are the core of the game. Not only do they make the Endeavour sets that will get you coins, they are the sets that you're working towards at the end of each decade. They will help you with defence, some give you new free actions, and many are double-sided giving you more decisions to make. The towns take two time to build, they are needed for the township achievement as well as the wealth achievement, and they also give you a new free action helping you get supplies which are useful to sell at certain opportunities. Peasants are actually incredibly powerful. They take no time to build, so go straight into your kingdom, but then you can use their free action to exhaust them, putting them back into the build queue. But their ability lets you expedite twice, speeding up the construction of buildings that you're trying to build. Fortifications are great to help when it comes time to defend your kingdom, as are the swordsmen, who also have an action where you can send them off on a conquest, back into the build queue to return with coins. Quarries are great as there's only two in a set, but if you're a noble, you may also build a gem mine. These take three time to build and you'll need to rank up from the peasant that you start off to a noble in order to build them, but it only takes one gem mine to start bringing in money. Probably a good time to talk about ranking up, which is the third action you can take. The cost in coins to rank up is shown on your current rank card, and with higher ranks come better rewards. For instance, Esquires have a hand size of six instead of five. Trade Masters get to draw new opportunity cards at different times in the game, which are great. You get one whenever you rank up as well, but they do very helpful and bonus feeling stuff. Some offer you new ongoing abilities, some give you one-time powerful actions, and some even augment and improve things that you've built that decade. You can rank up from commoner to nobles, like dukes, lords of dominion, or even king or queen. You do this via conquest though, where you send off soldiers in your kingdom, anything with the attack symbol, instead of spending money. Such a noble sacrifice, but these ranks give you the huge benefits, like more actions each turn or greater rewards on the things that you've already built. But also the higher ranks might have their downsides as you become a greater target for your enemies. Buying a dominion is the next action. They cost 10 coins, they one extra coin for every dominion you've got, but gosh are they bloody useful for points at the end of the game, which we'll get into in just a moment. The last main action is to foresee. This costs either two actions or five money. It's a high price, but it's incredibly powerful to consult an oracle 
because you get to see the next three year event cards, which could turn the tide of the decade in your favor. You also have free actions to buy Endeavor cards, expedite buildings in your build queue. Exchange lets you discard two cards and draw one. You have the free actions on your buildings. Or perhaps you drew an Endeavor Fortune card that maybe gave you a special one-time action, like getting three coins or building two Endeavors. So that's all the actions. And once you've done your actions, you'll move on to step three, which is choosing your stance. I personally choose violence, but players will wait at this point for everyone to finish their actions. And you choose, in secret if you'd like, between income and defense. Income gets you money, but defense is useful if there's warfare on the horizon, which you might know about because you may be foresaw. Step four is revealing the year event. Now, as you know, yearly events can be good and they can be bad. Well, apart from the Kingdom Wealth card, which is always in year five, where you'll get to draw some cards, you get an opportunity card if you're a trade master, and in the second and third decades, you reap the rewards that you've been working towards on your Kingdom track in the form of cash money. Step five is the year event itself. Each year has different possibilities that will come up as you don't use all of the cards and things will get more bountiful at times as well as more dangerous. Warfare will mean you suffer guaranteed casualties unless you took a defensive stance, being that you lose a building that you've built. Then the battle itself will mean you suffer damage equal to the current round. So if it's round six, then there's six damage for you to mitigate. You will have built defences to do this, fortifications, soldiers, some of the braver peasants. And then for each unit of damage greater than your defence, you have to pay by either exhausting cards, paying gold, discarding cards, or discarding buildings in your queue. Lots of ways for you to take damage so it won't ruin your plans completely, but it has to be better to defend yourself. All these yearly event cards will do different things. Wars will have different effects. Maybe the event is good and you get opportunities, but maybe it's the plague. It could be the plague. You have to hope for the best, expect the worst, but it could be the plague. Step six is harvesting. You've been making sets and here you'll get coins for all your completed sets. You have one coin for four grain fields, for example, and extra coins if you chose the income stance in step three. Then next is step seven, and you simply flip your rank card to get ready for the next year. At the end of the decade, you'll earn achievements for your sets, hopefully moving up the tracks. And then once you've made a record of those achievements, you move on to a new part of your kingdom to build. Discarding your sets and hoping to build new ones in the next decade. And after the third decade, once you've recorded your achievements, two swordsmen and a fortification, for example, moving up the military track, it's time to score. So you're aiming to be first or at least second on the six tracks, gaining you three or two true mark points respectively. But remember those expensive Dominion cards that you absolutely should have been buying as the game went on? Well, this is when they come into play. Before working out who is the highest up those tracks, you assign in secret your Dominion cards. They're double-sided, so you've got options, and they improve your score on their corresponding track, so you can maybe sneak into first place on the resources track to get an extra point that no one was expecting. Ties are friendly here, so if two players both have seven on the township track, they both get the three points, and you have to have scored at least one on a track to be in the race at all. And this is where all your hard work will pay off, and the player with the most true mark points is the winner. All the players will have one of the 12 heraldry cards at the start of the game. You'll draw a couple and you'll choose the one that you want. And these all offer a unique player power, a passive ability perhaps, or a buff. Ember 4 lets you foresee five cards instead of three, which is immense. The Ender Clan and the Apex Pyre help with defense in different ways. The Norvik Clan helps you gain access to additional actions. And House Lorien gets you extra money. And the rank of these cards also helps in the event of a tie at the end of the game, as well the rank that you achieve in the game. Antara's Kingdoms is a game that flows. Everything from the rulebook to the player raid and the kingdom board is there to really help make sure you know what your options, actions and abilities are. 
as well as what phase of the round is coming up. The game wants you to play it and it's quick with the simultaneous action portion and the land booklet that breaks down everything that you need to know, the glossary that tells you every keyword. It's a labour of love and if it appeals to you then head on over to their Kickstarter that is linked below. Or maybe you're on the Kickstarter right now. There's no way for me to know. I don't know what you're doing. I might be dead right now. That's the beauty of time.